So I'm currently working on a new site for Watch and Learn. The first MVP is already done and should be live soon, once I decide what I will use for hosting the front end of the site. The stack that I'm using for the site is October CMS for the back end, and of course for the front end is Next.js with TypeScript and Tail with CSS that uses just-in-time compilation, which turned out to be a really nice way of building the front end. The reason I'm using October CMS for the back end is that my site has been running on October for a few years now and all my videos and data are there and I don't want to waste time with transferring all of that data to another CMS because October is doing the job it needs to do just fine. Also since October is made with Laravel it makes it pretty easy to create your own APIs that you can connect to with something like Next.js, Vue, React and so on. So I was thinking about how to make pagination for all videos page, currently it looks like this. As you can see, it's a classical pagination that you need to click on to get to the next set of items and so on. In my opinion, this is not a very good pattern because normal pagination gives you a redundant info. What I mean by that is that the page of a list don't actually mean anything to the user. The user won't know what to expect on the second page and what to expect on the tenth page and so on. So in my opinion, it's better to just serve a list that users can scroll through without any required interaction to see the next items in the list. This is a familiar pattern that you can see on many apps and platforms like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and so on. And if you include filters with infinite scrolling, this makes a very nice combo because when the user actually filters something, he or she will have a general idea of what to expect in terms of content that will be returned. So for my site, I decided to go with infinite scroll because of the reasons mentioned earlier. Now, I already showed you how to make infinite scrolling with infinite scroll component in the previous video, but that component will make it hard for us to include filters to our list of items because it is primarily made to do only infinite scrolling. So on my site, I decided to go with React Query, which enables me to have infinite scrolling, filtering, and also everything else that React Query offers in terms of data fetching, like caching, content validation, and so on. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I did this. What I ended up with looks something like this. You can scroll through all my videos and once you hit the end, you get this nice message that you have scrolled through all the tutorials. Also, you can filter the content by tags, which will give you an idea of what types of tutorials you can expect. And of course, if you have many items in that list, infinite scrolling will turn on and will work. To create this type of functionality, you would of course first need to install React Query with npm install React Query. Uh, next, you will need to new up a query client in your app.js or app.tsx file if you are using TypeScript, which I am on this site, and then wrap your components with query client provider to which you will pass query client as a client prop. And with that, we are done with setting up React Query on our site. In the old TSX page, and this is the page on which I'm showing the list of all the tutorials, I'm grabbing the data or videos and also tags so that I can filter my list by tag. The tutorials I'm calling data for now. Usually you would use use query to interact with your data coming from the API, but in this case I want to enable infinite scrolling and I will have to use another hook called use infinite query. And to do that I will need to format my data a bit differently, so I'm going to add my data to pages array in an object that is going to be called videos. And I'm also going to set the page params array to be null. We are doing this because use infinite query expects the data to be formatted that way so that it can provide you with a nice infinite scrolling functionality, which is just a pagination that is going to trigger automatically once the user gets to the certain point on the page. And then finally I pass videos and tags to our component. Of course, we also need to call those props inside of our component, ignore TypeScript definitions if you are not using TypeScript. As I said before, instead of using use query, we are going to be using use infinite query hook, so we need to import that from React Query. For the filters interaction, I'm using React Select component, which we covered in one of the previous tutorials, and I'm just sending in the IDs and titles of the filters. 
Once the user interacts with that component and selects a tag or tags, uh, this will trigger set tag IDs from the use state hook and will set up the IDs of the tags and save it to our state so that we can pass it in to React Query. Now it's time to set up use infinite query hook. As you can see, there isn't much code here and that is what is great about React Query. It will give you a lot of functionality with a minimum amount of code. First of all, we are getting some variables from the hook, data, status, is success, fetch next page, has next page, is fetching next page and is loading. We can use these variables through our component to set the behavior of infinite scroll and filtering functionality. Next, we are sending an array of tag IDs, which is going to be empty until the user selects some tags. After that, we are defining our method for getting the data. I called mine get more videos. There is one more thing that we need to define and that is get next page param. This is important because React Query needs this to be able to get next page of videos from my API. This will probably be different for you depending on the API you are using. For me, I'm checking if the current page is equal to the last page and if it is, then I return undefined, which means I'm at the end of the list. But if it isn't, I set the next page to be current page plus one. Since I'm using October, I can easily create paginated lists with the power of a Laravel behind it. And the code for that looks like this. As you can see, it's only a few lines of code that is just telling October to show all the videos and to show nine of them per page. Once you hit that endpoint, you get something like this. As you can see, we get some data about pagination and in the data array, we are getting videos for the current page. If we want to get the videos from page number 12, for example, we just need to send the URL parameter of page to our API and set it to be 12. And React Query will use this to load next pages when the user scrolls the page. The only other param that we are passing to use infinite query hook is initial data and this is specific to Next.js because I'm getting the first batch of videos from the server and they are going to be my initial videos. This is how I'm using variables that I got from use infinite query hook. First of all, uh, if you are using a React query, you always need to check if the data is successfully fetched and you do that with is success variable. Then, and this is specific to use infinite query, since we are formatting our data a bit differently, we map through pages and then we map through every page that has been loaded and show our content. In my case, I'm using video card component to which I pass a key and then I pass the whole video object to show my videos. Next, I'm referencing a div with the ref so that I can follow its position on the page and when its position is near the viewport, it will trigger fetch next page method that is going to be called with use intersection observer hook that I just copied from the internet. Also, I'm using is fetching next page variable to show loading more text if the new data is being fetched. Then I'm checking if the videos are loading for the first time with is loading variable and if there are, I'm showing a nice loading video block. And lastly, I'm using has next page and is loading variables to check if the user has scrolled through all the tutorials. So if we don't have next pages and nothing is loading, then we show that block and the user then knows that he or she is at the end of the list. And the last thing that I need to show you is the actual method that I'm using to fetch the data and also filter it. As you may remember, I call that method get more videos and you can see here that it is only a few lines long. First of all, I'm sending it page param, which defaults to one because when you load a page, you would always be on the first page of the return data. And also I'm sending in query key that I use to filter the videos by tag. Then I'm getting those tag IDs and join them because I can filter the videos by multiple tags so that my request URL will look something like this. If I'm getting the tags from the user input, uh, then I go into this conditional and send the request to my API which will hit the tags API route and return all the videos that are tagged by the chosen tags and return them paginated just like we do for the initial videos. This will enable that my infinite scroll works even when the content is filtered. If there are no tags selected by the user, I will just get the videos with the current page param and return them.
When you connect all of this together, you get infinite scroll and also filtering for your page. And that is it. Uh, this is how you would enable infinite scrolling and filtering for your app. So anyway guys, this has been it for this video. Everything I did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.